Hi, I'm your host Tish Tansel, and this is Urban Esque Living. and your friends. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to Urban Esque Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and today this is one of those shows where we have got to use what's already in the fridge. I have some guests coming over and I don't have time to run out to the store to buy a bunch of food, so I've got to use what I've already got in my fridge. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, the host of Urban S Living. I'd like to invite you to join me on Comcast TV 68, Saturday afternoons at 2.30. We'll get some great cooking in. Hi, welcome back to Urban S Living. And today is a party food day. It's not a meal day, it's not a a uh, day where we're making some elaborate, long time meal. These are quick and easy snacks because I have some guests coming over and I need to have some things made really quickly. Now the thing is, I'm going to be using things from my refrigerator. I went in the refrigerator and discovered I don't have any fresh onions. So what are you going to do? I happen to have some dried onions. Now while we know that fresh onions are the thing to have when you don't have fresh onions, you have dried onions. And so what we're going to do is reconstitute the onions. And reconstitute the onions means that we're going to put the water back in the onions so that they look like they're fresh. So what you do is you just take your dried onions and you put them in a glass. And so we're doing about a couple of different recipes, okay? So as you see, that's about a quarter of a cup of dried onions. So our onions are in our cup. So what we're going to do is just take some plain water and we're just going to pour the water over these dried onions. Make sure all of your onions are covered with the water and we're just gonna let that sit. And as these onions sit, they're going to absorb the water and then they're going to look good as new, or good as fresh, I should say. Okay, so now we're going on to the next step. Now the next thing we're going to do is make some homemade bread because everyone loves homemade bread. And yes, I know that homemade bread is not one of those quick and easy things, but I happen to have a box recipe for homemade bread and the bread and all of the ingredients are already mixed up in this bag and here is the yeast. So all we have to do is mix the bread, flour, and the yeast. So let's do this. Okay, so we have our bread flour mixture that's already prepackaged in the bowl and there's nothing wrong with using a homemade bread making mix. You know, it's still you cooking it. It's still your loving hands putting it together. So the next thing that we're going to do is add the yeast. And we're just gonna put that right inside. And what I'm gonna do is stir it because I wanna make sure that the yeast is distributed in all of our flour mixture. Okay, so now our yeast and our flour mixture are all combined. And that's a good thing because you wanna make sure that when your bread rises, all of it rises and if you don't have the yeast completely mixed together in all of the bread it's not going to rise correctly the next thing you're going to do is add the liquid and the liquid must be at at least 140 degrees that's going to activate the the sugars in your mixture that's what's going to make that yeast rise you have to have that water at a certain temperature if the water is lower it's not going to rise so I had this setting in the oven to make sure that it stayed nice and warm 
And so I'm going to put it into our bowl and we're gonna just mix it. And we're gonna mix this until it forms a, uh, at least sticks together. And you use a wooden spoon when you're doing this. You're not using a metal spoon. In a minute, we're going to start using our hands. Hands. We're gonna turn this entire mixture out onto our board. And we're going to knead this bread dough at least 70 times. So you can count, get your hand work out in the meantime. If you want to grease your hands, you can. Use a non-stitch spray, which is what I'm going to do right now. And basically, you just spray your hands with some of the non-stitch spray, and you just dig in and get kneading. Okay, I'm about halfway through with my 70 knees. And basically, when you're kneading bread, you just push down with the palms of your hands Flip it and bring it over. So you flip the bread down, you push down, you turn it, and basically what you're doing is you're bringing layers and you're building up the gluten in the bread. Okay, so we're done with our kneading, but one thing I did want to show you are reconstituted onions. In just the short time that we've been here today, look at that. I put in about one fourth of a cup of dried onions, added some water, and now we have a cup full of onions. Reconstituted onions is what you use if you don't have fresh onions like I didn't have today. Okay, so we're going to make some pinwheels uh, as our first hors d'oeuvre for our guest today. So now that the bread is kneaded, what I'm going to do is roll it out. And so when you're rolling out bread, what you need is to lightly flour your surface and you just kind of spread that out and you can kind of like uh, move the bread around so that the bread gets some flour on there so we also have our pin rolling pin and you can use whatever kind of rolling pin you like I like to put a little bit of flour on the rolling pin also and we're going to roll this bread out into a rectangle so you just kind of roll one way, you move that bread, and you roll it another way. And you keep doing this until you get the desired length and width that you want. Okay, so as you can see, my dough is nice and rolled out, and it's a rectangular form. I've tried to get it as even as possible because we're going to be rolling this up. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pastry brush and I'm just actually going to just go over the surface. And this is olive oil. And so now I'm mixing in some of our reconstituted onions. And we're making sure we get all of the edges because we're gonna roll this and we want everyone to get a delicious bite of our herbal mix. Okay, so now that I have our garlic and onion on, I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. Okay, so that was our pepper, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon salt. And this should add a nice little zest to this. This hors d'oeuvre is going to be vegan because some people don't eat meat, so we're gonna have a selection. Now, one thing that I made in my own urban garden, these are bean sprouts. Actually, these are made with red kale. They have a lot of flavor, and it's great to add these to your breads because it adds another element. And so we're just gonna spread these on. And they're so delicate, you really don't have to cook them. Once the bread cooks, they'll cook right on in. Okay, so now our beautiful homegrown red kale is sprinkled on top of our homemade bread. Now at this point, if you had some cheese and you wanted to make these into some cheese twirls, this would be the perfect opportunity. Or if you had some Parmesan grated, just put the Parmesan on top and that would actually make this a nice cheesy pinwheel. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to take the ends of our bread 
and we're gonna roll it up. So now that it's rolled up, what we're going to do, I'm gonna ease this back towards me a little bit. You can maneuver this bread, it's not that difficult. Okay, so what we're going to do, since it's got a nice roundness to it, I'm gonna take some of my olive oil and just go over the top and go over the sides because we want this nice and brown. Okay, so now our entire row is completely covered in olive oil. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to take our pan. Now make sure you spray your surface well because you don't want your bread to tear or stick to the pan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a sharp knife and we're just going to cut these in even slices. Okay, perfect. So now that we have these all cut up into slices, we're going to just put them on our sheet tray. Okay, so now all of our pinwheels are on the sheet tray and these fit perfectly. Now what you don't want to do is pack these too tightly because they still have to rise and we still want to leave some room on the outside and we want the sides to be a beautiful golden color and if you pack them in, the sides are not going to really get done. They're going to be soft on the inside and so these are hand hors d'oeuvres and so we want them nice and crisp so that when people pick them up they don't fall apart. So what we're gonna do is take our olive oil again and we're just gonna go over the tops this time. And we're gonna make sure that all of these have a beautiful coating of olive oil, those spirals. So what I'm going to do now that the tops are nice and wet is I'm going to just sprinkle a little salt over each one. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take some clear wrap and I'm going to cover all of this. So you're gonna cover these lightly and we're gonna hope that they rise. That is a successful bread if it rises. If your bread doesn't rise, then you gotta start all over again. Take the bread, make it into breadcrumbs. It'll still be delicious as breadcrumbs. So we're gonna set this aside and we are going to wait until this rises. So I will get back with you as soon as this rises and we can pop these in the oven. No matter what your age, it's important to get your body moving every single day to help keep you healthy. Look, Mrs. Obama, I'm getting moving right now by jogging. There are so many different activities you can do, indoors or outside. Now I'm jumping to get moving. Uh, just find an activity that you like. And now I'm dancing. Good for you, Big Bird. Get moving. It's good for you. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tanso and I am the host of Urban Esque Living. I'd like to invite you to join me Saturday afternoon on Comcast TV 68 at 2.30. See you there. Hi, welcome to Urban Esque Living and today I am having a party and I don't have time to go running out to find something to serve so I'm just going to be clever and use something from my fridge. I remember that I had made some pastry dough, I made some chicken, and I had these terrific bean sprouts that I grew myself in my own little homemade urban garden. That's another show. And so we're going to be making Chinese spring rolls with a Moroccan twist because you know this is urban as living, so we have to combine those flavor groups. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dust our cutting board. And so I'm using a cutting board today. And so we want to make sure that our surface is nice and coated with a thin layer of flour. We don't want to use too much flour. And we also don't want to get any flour on our beautiful silk dress. So next thing we're going to do is knead this because this has been in the freezer. I took it out. So we want it soft. Okay, so I took about half of that roll of pastry dough that we had and I rolled it out. The other half I put back in the fridge because the pastry dough has a lot of butter and as it gets soft it makes it harder to work with. So what you do is you work with it in portions. So this is half of it. So what I'm going to do is make my filling real quick. And so we have this chicken, this is some celery, so we're just going to mix that in. 
And of course we add our cumin because we can't have anything in Urban S Kitchen without cumin of course. And some garlic. And I'm going to mix in about uh, half of my homegrown bean sprouts. So we're just going to mix that together. And we're not going to worry about cooking the bean sprouts because they're so nice and thin that once they cook in the oven they're going to be good. And in order to add a little bit of spice to this whole mix, we have some homemade barbecue sauce. And this will actually make a great dipping sauce also once these are done. So we're going to mix this all together. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. All right, so now I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut our dough. Now this gadget right here is a pastry wheel. This is a professional pastry cutter and this is what you use in order to get your slices totally even. So we're going to spread this out and we're going to use our wheel. Okay, so as you can see, we have perfect squares. And this is what we're going to put our filling in for our guests because we want to have nice finger foods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling these up with our chicken spicy mixture. And of course I'm going to use a portion scoop because we want to make sure that all of our chicken finger spicy wraps are nice and even so that no guest feels as though they are being slighted. Everyone gets an even share. Okay, so I already have half of them done. Now I'm working on the second half of the dough that I put in the refrigerator in order to keep that dough chilled. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Now first of all, we're going to expedite this because it's almost guest time. So we're going to take a little bit of our egg wash that we've made. And egg wash is basically just one egg with about equal parts water. And we're going to go around the edges of each one of these. Okay, so once you've gone around the edges, we're going to seal the insides in. And that's basically what the egg wash helps to do, is to seal the edges. Because when these cook, you don't want them popping open. So you're just going to fold it over, and we're going to tap down those edges. Now in order to keep these edges together, we're going to use a fork, and we're going to go around the edges making a fork design. Now if you recall, when we made the other ones, we rolled them with our hands to make a nice braided look, but these are so small that you really can't do that. So what we're going to do is just take a fork and go around the edges. And that makes a beautiful little fork design. So I'm going to do the rest of these now. Okay, this is beautiful. So now that we have all of these lined up in a row, what we're going to do is give them an egg wash because we want them to have that beautiful professional look. And so we're just going to go over the top of each one with our egg wash. And make sure you get those edges because you don't want to have pale edges on your hors d'oeuvres. You want them nice and crisp so that when people pick them up they don't fall apart. Okay, so we have our final hors d'oeuvre egg wash. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of flavor as far as the appearance and sprinkle a little bit of sesame seed over the top of each one. Now you want to do this while they're still wet. That way as the hors d'oeuvres cook, the sesame seeds will bake right into that crust. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is make some small slits in the surface of our hors d'oeuvres because as they cook, we don't want them to pop. And so we want to release the steam as they cook and then make sure that that crust is nice and crisp. So you're just going to take your knife and you're just going to make a little incision, probably two, right in the top. And that's going to make sure that these turn out perfect. Okay, so now it's time to put our nice little barbecued, Asian-inspired hors d'oeuvres into the oven. 
Now these are made with a regular pastry dough, so we didn't have to let these rise. All we had to do was fill them and let it go with an egg wash. These are just kind of a regular pastry. So we're just gonna pop these in the oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay, so at 20 minutes, we are going to have some more beautiful hors d'oeuvres. You're going to love these nice barbecued flavor in each little bite, stay tuned. Okay, now as you can see, our luscious herbal pinwheels have risen beautifully. We left enough space so that when they start to cook, they have enough room to remain golden all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is give these a light egg wash because we want that top just absolutely picture perfect. Okay, so now every single one of these has a beautiful coating of egg wash on it. So now we are going to sit these in the oven at 425 degrees and let them cook until they are luscious. So let's pop these in the oven now. And as soon as our guests arrive, these should be about ready to come out. And so they'll have some nice, hot, homemade bread. Okay, so I set the timer at 18 minutes. We're going to look and see if they're ready at 18 minutes. We're gonna keep an eye on them because we don't want them to burn because if you burn your hors d'oeuvres, your guests will never let you live it down. So, see you back here in a few minutes. When these are done, we're gonna take them out and I'm gonna show you just how fabulous your hors d'oeuvres are going to look. Stay tuned. So, I got this new family and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, and this is Urban as Living. And we're doing party foods because I'm having guests over and I want some delicious hors d'oeuvres to serve to my guests. So I've made some bread and so now what I want to do is add some salsa because some guests may want something a little bit lighter. But it's not just any salsa. This is going to be a bean salsa. We're repurposing some beans that I made the other day into some salsa. So stay tuned, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'd like to drop out of high school and get a meaningless job that makes me feel bad about myself. I'd like to fall victim to the old boys network. I don't want anybody to notice me. I just want to fly under the radar. I want to splatter against the glass ceiling. I don't have an opinion. I want to be a straight C student. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. <laughs> I mean, I want to succumb to peer pressure all of my life. I'm going to be a best-selling author <laughs> and win the National Book Award. I'm going to be a marine biologist. Wait. I take my back. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. I think I'll be the president. I'm going to be secretary of state. World class chef, right here. Race car driver. Artist. Paleontologist. Film director. Surgeon. Teacher. Scientist. Olympian. I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to change the world. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, and today I'm making a quick and easy bean dip. I'm having some guests over in a few minutes. The doorbell is about to ring, and I really need to get this bean dip done. They're going to think it took me all afternoon to do it, but really, it didn't. I'm using some things that I already have made in the refrigerator, and I'm going to repurpose it into a beautiful bean dip. So the first ingredient that we have, of course, are beans, and these are red beans. And so this is going to be a unique bean dip. So we're gonna put our beans in a bowl. And the next ingredient that I'm going to add just for some crunch is some celery. And that's gonna add some freshness. I grew some bean sprouts and these have a terrific flavor. These are bean sprouts that come from lentils and they actually took only a few days to bloom to this stage. OK, 
Okay, earlier I found that I didn't have any onions, so I had to use some dried onions and I reconstituted them with water. And what I did was simply poured in some dried onions into my measuring cup and added some water and let them sit. And as you can see, we have onions. So if you ever are in a pinch and you don't have fresh onions, but you do have dried onions, you can always just reconstitute them yourself. That way you don't have to worry about it. Even if you don't have a shortage of onions and you don't feel like cutting your onions, you can do this quick and easy trick to save yourself some time. Okay, so we had about uh, two tablespoons of onions in our salsa. And we're gonna stir this all together. Okay, and then lastly, we put our salsa in from the store. And we mix this all together. My guests should be here shortly, but they're going to think I took all afternoon making this. And what, this took about five minutes to make? Oh, it's been a rush trying to get my hors d'oeuvres ready before my guests come, but I can see they're already pulling up in my driveway. So I just wanna thank you for joining me on this edition of Urban as Living. This has been Tish Tansel, and today we made these beautiful herbal pinwheels. We made some bean salsa that was really quick. And we made these delicious chicken popovers that are great. If you like any of these recipes, please go to my Facebook page. That is Facebook slash Tish Tansel. Or you can tweet me on Twitter or email me at tishtansel at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and thank you for joining me on this edition of Urban S. Living. of Tish Tansel, the host of Urban S Living. I'd like to invite you to join me on Comcast TV 68 Saturday afternoons at 2.30. We'll get some great cooking in.